Growing up in Cambodia, I remember that uh, it's like paradise. Everywhere you go, it's so innocent. You know, the country is so innocent. There's this overwhelming sense of sort of generosity and calmness when you are in the country. They call Cambodia the land of a thousand smiles. The people are just uh, genuine and kind, and they find peace, respect, and love. Hi, my name is Koa Keith Che. Hi, my name is Laura Tancredi. I am the founder and executive director of Global Children. I emigrated to the United States uh, back in 1981. Um, started out uh, from Phnom Penh, <coughs> Cambodia, uh, right after the, the uh, war uh, in 1978-79. When the uh, Khmer Rouge took over, that gave rise to the uh, communists, in particular the Pol Pot regime. So the first thing we did was, you know, to evacuate. And uh, if you didn't, they would force you out by shooting you. So um, at the time I was very, very young, but I still understood. It's horrendous. I mean, uh, the first thing I saw was just the chaos and the soldiers to say, keep on moving, keep on moving. And I remember the man, there was one man that trying to get back in because he wanted to get back to his family and he refuses and they uh, pushed, got him to shove and one of the commanders pulled out his gun, shot him point blank, you know, in the head. And I'm looking up and it happened right, right near me. Keith was a very classic um, difficult and true story of what happens during war. There is an important connection between those who are in their 40s who, who survived the war as young children and now the new generation who have been born after the war but are really living through the effects of it. The more I spent time in Cambodia, the more I realized that, that the older children there were really overlooked. Uh, you have teenagers and, and people who reach 18 years old at the orphanages and they have no social support, they have no financial support, uh, they have no emotional support, and once they reach that age, um, without a degree and without an education, they're really left to fend for themselves. Global Children runs exclusively a university um, program where we provide full scholarship, mentoring, housing, uh, health care, um, emotional support for students. Um, education in Cambodia is relatively cheap compared to uh, developed countries. So for our programs it costs about $4,000 a year for us to send um, one student to university and take care of all of their needs, um, all encompassing. Um, so for $12,000 will be four years, you'll have a student who will come from an orphanage, so they'll become part of our family um, and four years later they'll graduate with a bachelor's degree and they'll become um, a self-sufficient and uh, professional member of society, which is incredible. Our success rates are incredibly high. We've had 24 students enter the program, and we've had a 100% employment rate of people who've graduated and, and find work in their professional field. One of the first individuals to enter into our university program, his name was Sadat. Sadat had parents at one point, and there was four siblings. And um, his father, I believe, died of illness, and uh, they were a very poor family. They were farmers. And his mother, from my understanding, went to the Thai border to collect fruit and try and earn some money. And um, she was taken by authorities and, as far as we understand, was killed and, and never returned home. He knew where he came from. He knew that his future was incredibly limited. And four years later, he graduated with a bachelor's degree. It was our first group of 10 students who graduated with higher university degrees. But we weren't really sure at the time what was to come. And they all went out and found employment and became self-sufficient. Um, but Sadat's story, I think, extends a little beyond that and shows sort of the exponential impact that we can have. We ended up um, admitting his younger sister into the program just a few years later. And she went through university and she graduated with her bachelor's degree and is now in banking. And then we went and worked with his um, youngest sibling, who was his younger brother, and he then entered into the university program. And he just this year graduated with his bachelor's degree in architecture and he's continuing his studies in engineering. And so we were able to take a family of three siblings who lost both of their parents, um, who had no future, and we brought them into a program and all three now um, are, are living on their own and giving back to their communities. 
the fear and the responsibility that he had for his brother and sister um, was extreme and it scared him. And um, to be able to help him like that and see his gratitude um, and know that we saved him from the streets and his brother and sister as well is, um, it's why I do this work, sorry. Where would I be or what would happen to me if there was no organization like Global Children? I don't think I'll be here today. I would like to give back, to help them help those who cannot help themselves, to help the helpless. And in a way, I, I hope that I can make a, a small change. I really started Global Children so that I could just have an impact on one child. And um, fortunately, it's grown to more than one. Uh, and they're old enough now that we're able to see the impacts uh, of the next generation of students that we take in and the next generation in Cambodia. It's amazing to know that, that your impact is not just one-on-one, -on -one, that, that my impact of working with one, with one child can go on and then turn into uh, five more children, into a community of 20, into a village of 100. Um, and so it's, it's, it's very gratifying and I think that that exponential change is necessary in order to reach out to the, the thousands and thousands of Cambodians that do need help.